This guy is a YouTuber known as Mr. Beast. And lately he started making a bunch of aviation related content. Who can blame him? Airplanes are pretty cool. But just because he has a slightly larger YouTube following than me doesn't mean that he can say stuff about aviation and go unchecked. He's talking about doing a flight for a dollar up to a $500,000 flight, so let's see what he does here. We're gonna fly on this jet that costs half a million dollars per flight. And we're also gonna fly on this $25,000 private jet, a $10,000 first class seat, a blimp, and so much more. But before I show you what it's like to fly on some of the most luxurious planes on the planet, we're gonna fly on the cheapest plane in the world. It's really rickety. Here's the dollar. To be honest, that looks like a plane I'd probably actually really enjoy flying if I didn't have to follow all the rules they have now. But I don't really want to watch this little plane. I want to see the cool plane. So I'm just going to fast forward to the next one. Our next plane is the $1,000 first class plane ticket. But here's the thing, boys. I bought all the first class seats. So sit wherever you want. Would you like some Miracle Mist lotion? Why? Because first class, baby. <laughs> Fine dining, huh? Each of us had our own seat and TV. The ticket also comes with a decent meal, a free bag of toiletries, and pajamas. Do we get to take all this home? With us. And during longer flights, recline. We should recline into a bed. I feel like I'm in a coffin, which I like. Yeah, this is crazy. The only downside is that you don't get a lot of privacy. It's really awkward filming a video with all these people. First, and I don't mean to nitpick here, but this is an American Airlines paint job, but this is actually a JetBlue aircraft. I clearly spend too much time hanging around flight crews and in airplanes, but the orange tie is what got my attention. And of course, this blurred out JetBlue sign. I believe this is JetBlue Mint, and I've never been on one of those flights, but JetBlue has a few planes that are in this configuration that have these lay down reclined seats, and they're usually used for these longer flights. And I've known some flight attendant friends of mine that we used to work together that now work at JetBlue, and you have to do this special training to be a Mint flight attendant, and that's where you're gonna have a lay down seat and it's just a, a better experience. So I believe this is a mint flight because the JetBlue flights that I've been on didn't have those really cool seats. But he's saying it was only a thousand dollars, but he bought all of these seats. And with the price of tickets being as high as they are right now, he's saying he only spent a thousand dollars, but that's times 12. So I'm guessing he actually spent more like 12 to 15 grand. And I half agree with what this guy says right here. I feel like I'm in a coffin, which I like. That's the seat design on a lot of different planes, and it's true, and your feet at the end, they start to get bunched up together so there's room for the next row in front of you, and it does kind of feel like you're in a coffin, and I don't like it. And I also don't like this either. It's really awkward filming a video with all these people walking by. That's the story of my life, brother, trying to film these vlogs that I do with everybody on the plane, in my pilot uniform, while trying to be incognito and do it all. It's, it's really tricky, and it's hard to do all of that and not make the people around you start paying attention to what you're doing. So 100% agree, it's not easy to do. So let's see what a plane ticket that is 10 times more expensive feels like. And now the $10,000 plane ticket. Oh man, this is nice. I have unlimited legroom here. Look, let's start off by analyzing what we get. A tablet, a giant touchscreen TV, my own in-seat drink bar, snacks. This isn't feasible chocolate. I want a refund. We're getting connected to the Wi-Fi. We might have paid $10,000 for our seat, but we still have to pay $20 for Wi-Fi. It's not free. Now we're taking off, which is pretty crazy because I can literally watch it on my TV. And because it's a 16 hour flight, I get to take a sh Look at how nice this bathroom is. You have a sink, a toilet, and then a shower. That is crazy. Look at that. We are 30,000 feet in the air and I can take a shower. And that's not all. We saved the best for last. Hey, how's it going? There's a private lounge in the back of the plane. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah? I, I, Ow. You're not dreaming. That was the $10,000 plane ticket. So it looks like he brought himself and three of his buddies. So 10,000 a piece. That's another 40 grand that he's dropped so far in this video. And I've been on the Emirates A380. It is an incredible plane. And one of the things that Emirates does really better than any airline that I've seen is that for the pilot side at least, they are great about their maintenance. You get somewhere and there's something broken with your plane, they have something to fix it at every station. And my friends, I have some friends that used to fly there, they'd always talk about if there was anything broken, as soon as they wrote it up, the maintenance would make sure they'd go and get it and they keep their planes really, really clean. It's, it's really nice. But I have to agree, if you just paid $10,000 for your seat, why do you have to pay for the Wi-Fi? We're getting connected to the Wi-Fi. We might have paid $10,000 for our seat, but we still have to pay $20 for Wi-Fi. It's not free. 
Now, I'm really fortunate because a lot of the international travel that I do is for work, and when you do it for work, they pay for you to be in business because when you get there, they need you to be rested in order to fly their plane. So, I have got to fly on a lot of really cool planes and business class, and they're very expensive. But Emirates really does go above and beyond with some of their experiences here, like being able to take a shower. The problem is, you only get five minutes. So I really wouldn't want to waste that time blogging it. But the other really cool thing about Emirates is all the free snacks. On top of that, me and the boys can order as much gourmet food as we want. Point the camera up and down. And now we're at the $25,000 plane ticket that is up these stairs. That's right, there's floors. This is insane. He literally just got off the exact same plane at Emirates, an A380. This lady's uniform looks a lot like Singapore Airlines, and so it looks like he's on Singapore's A380. Literally the exact same plane with stairs and everything. This is crazy. We're gonna be sitting above other people. Oh my god. This is your room. For $25,000, you get two massive rooms. Oh, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Holy cow. Our space on this plane is literally four times bigger than the last one. I've never seen a plane where I can comfortably do jumping jacks. Look at this. We also get two chairs, a ton of TVs. There are more TVs in this one room than all of the other planes we've been on. Food served by a personal flight attendant. Why is it that after a certain price point, they always give you caviar? And a bathroom. Can we talk about something? <laughs> this bathroom is like a disappointment. No shower, no heated floors, half the size. I think the $10,000 flight was a better price point. Would you pay this kind of money for a single flight? I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend a car. Buy a car instead. And now the best part of the room. A queen size bed. Ooh, why don't they just make every seat a bit? Bro, instead of three seats side by side, just put a bunk bed with three beds. This dude is spending an insane amount to just make this video. I'm guessing he's probably over like $100,000 between the airfare, hotels, and then, you know, when you land somewhere to get to the next airline, not every airline goes to every city. So he's having to get to another city in some cases, I would guess, to get onto another airline. This is crazy. Now, typically the Singapore A380 is going to have the first class in the very front of the plane and then the business class on the upper deck in the back of the plane, which is where I sat. But one of the things that they don't mention here while they're talking about this whole thing is how that plane, when I got on, it had free Wi-Fi. In your seat, there was this little card and you would type in a number for your seat and some code and then you had free Wi-Fi in the plane, which is something I really liked. When I did it, I had been flying all night and was trying to catch a flight home to go to somebody's birthday party. So I, I didn't end up using it all. I ended up just getting on there, staying in my, sitting in my seat to take off. Once we literally got off the ground, I went full into sleep mode and I barely used the Wi-Fi, but I did appreciate it. Now, as for this guy. I've never seen a plane where I can comfortably do jumping jacks. Look at this. My channel name is 74 Gear and I fly planes that a giraffe could do a jumping jack in. At this price point, you get the entire plane. <laughs> Technically, that's not a $100,000 plane. It's actually more like a $80 million plane. If they do all the finishing on this BBJ, it's a Boeing business jet, but let's see what he says. At this price point, you get the entire plane. <laughs> oh, it's like a yacht. This is wild. This is unbelievable. You wanna know the craziest part? This is just one of four rooms. There's more to the plane? I thought this was it. Guys, come over here. What room is this? This is literally another lounge area with a bunch of snacks and a huge TV. And if you're feeling tired, you get your own private bedroom. Dude, what? This is like a hotel. And last but not least, the bathroom. Tariq, shut your mouth right now. Shut it. This is insane. There's a seat in the bathroom, dude. Have you ever even seen a jet half this size? No. Never. Never? Isn't this the same guy that was just doing jumping jacks on an A380? which is literally twice as tall because it has two floors and it says it's a wide body, probably about twice as wide on this BBJ, which is a Boeing business jet. If you wanna sound cool, you just say BBJ, but that's what it stands for. So next time you see one of these, you can be like, oh cool, check out the BBJ. And actually one of the coolest parts about flying on one of these types of planes is that the passengers have different security standards. So they're all checked and all that stuff. So it's different from when you're flying as a normal passenger, they, depending on the airline and depending on the type of charter, will allow you to come up to the flight deck and talk with the pilots, ask questions and things like that while you're in flight, which I think is really cool. Uh, reminds me of 
back when I was a kid and you could go up onto the flight deck, you'd, planes would get up in the cruise and then they would make an announcement. And they'd say, oh, if your child wants to come see the flight deck, you can come up. And all the kids would like crawl over their parents. I think I did it one time and I just, all the kids just go bombing up through the, the galley, up through the galley and up into the flight deck. And then you ask the pilot like a million questions. And I remember asking like, what does this button do? What does that button do? And they were probably, I don't remember what they said, but after a while they were like annoyed with me and they were like, why don't you give someone else a chance? And I was like, Ugh, I went back. But that's how it used to be. Now you have to fly private in order to get to do this. But since Mr. Beast is actually flying with a group of people, if you have a larger group, it's actually pretty cost effective to do something like this. Because when you're flying private, whether you're paying for yourself or 20 people or 40 people, depending on how many seats on the plane is, the cost is really about the same. You might be having to pay a little bit more for food or something, but you're renting that plane. When that plane goes, you can bring whoever you want with it. So it's pretty cool. I've seen back in the day when I used to fly charter stuff, you'd have somebody come on and then last minute they'd run into a friend and then they would come on the flight. It's just kind of how it works in that charter world. I didn't do a lot of the really high-end charter stuff that some of the other people did when I flew with the charter airline, but you would hear the stories of all the stuff that would go down. Oh, wow. What? I have steak, mashed potatoes, oh, and I mean. veggies. And you guys inspired me a little bit, so I brought some pizza. This is my favorite plane because it has YouTube. But we didn't pop up first, so now it's not. You can tell this is a rich person big because there's like 500 pillows. This one out of here. That one out of here. I'm gonna fly this thingy. And that's the beauty of flying private. You can do whatever you want, whenever. Carl's flying the plane, Chandler's jamming out the pizza, Chris is taking a nap, and I don't even know where no one went. There's no layovers when you fly private, and there's no TSA, so you save tons of time. Hence why basically every rich person you know owns a private jet. Hey guys, Yeah. we're gonna land soon. That's cool that someone at least went up to the flight deck to check it out and have made this vlog. When I do 747 charters, uh, like when I took that sports team out to Japan, we were on the ground there. When you're on the ground, people tend to come up and they want to see the flight deck. That's usually always the case. I don't have any videos or photos of those people because I would get fired if I showed them to you, but they would come up and you can kind of tell when somebody wants to get up there. And I just happen to be in the galley. Now the upper deck of the 747, the flight deck's all the way in the front and the galley is in the back of that second floor. So I was in the galley talking with the flight attendants and I saw one of the passengers that we were flying come up and kind of look up there and then walk away. And as they walked all the way back, I said, you want to go look up there, don't you? And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. I was like, you want to go look up there, come on. And because people don't want to be intrusive. So I, I brought him up there and got some photos for him and let him sit in the seat and all that stuff. So it's really cool that still to this day, people want to go see my office and where I do all the work, regardless of how wealthy you are, they still find it really interesting. But unfortunately, my airline doesn't let me do these things where people get to sit up there in flight. The other thing most people don't know is that when you do these BBJs or smaller private jets, the flight attendants and the flight crew usually have to go get all the food. So when they're on their layover, they'll have to go to a restaurant or go to a place, pick up all the food, snacks, drinks, all that stuff, and get that all ready for the customer. On, on my plane, obviously, that's not how it works. It's all catered and all that stuff because there's so many people and so much food. But on a plane where there's going to be five or six people, a lot of times a flight crew, you'll see them leaving a hotel. I can usually tell when it's a private jet charter crew because there'll be maybe three or four of them. And then they'll have food bags with them because they're getting, they have snacks and everything in order for the passengers to be having something to eat and they'll have specific things that they want. Like you can see here, she brought them the normal really nice food, but then seems like she also got a pizza for them, which is pretty awesome. What happens is you'll fill out this little request form, say the types of foods that you want and things that you would like to see on your flight. And then the flight crew will go get that. I guess somebody probably put, I want pizza. And so they went and ordered a pizza and then warmed it up. There's an oven on there, which you've seen in some of my vlogs. And now the $300,000 blimp. I'll unblurred in a second. Well, I don't know anything about blimps, so I can't really add anything to this. I do know it's a separate rating that you do need to get in order to fly the blimps. It's not like if you fly an airplane, you can fly a blimp. I mean, I could, I could probably fly a blimp, but it's a special license you have to get. And I know they have to do approaches. I've heard of them shooting an actual approach to come in and land in order to stay current. They have to do all that. It just, to me, seems kind of funny because you're moving in like four knots. So how hard could it be? But I guess it's a 
it's a larger piece of mass that you have to correct for. But I don't know anything about blimps, so there's really, I can't talk about any blimp related stuff. So let's go to the next cooler plane. And now the most expensive private plane ticket on the planet. Welcome aboard. I suggest you taking your shoes off. The carpet's actually two million dollars. She's like, I suggest it really hard. And by square feet, this is bigger than our houses. It's almost impossible to imagine how big this jet actually is. Well, it's not like that hard to imagine how big it is. It is literally this big. That's how big it is. And if he's paying $500,000 for that plane ride, he's got to be close to a million dollars just making this one video. I haven't made a million dollars with all my YouTube and everything combined and all the years I'm doing it, and this guy spent $1 million on one video. This is just wild to me. And while that is a very nice plane, there are more expensive private jets out there, like the 747. I have no idea how much it would cost to lease or rent one of those for a flight. I'm sure it would be a lot of money. But I've always told you about how crazy expensive everything in aviation is, and that is proven here with the $2 million carpet. I don't know what kind of carpet costs $2 million, it's a big plane, but it's not that big, and $2 million is just crazy. But everything in aviation is just wildly more expensive. It's probably like fire retardant and all kinds of other crazy stuff, and very, very light, so the plane can take more gas. Who knows? Right here is a bedroom. Wow. A bedroom. Another bedroom. Another bedroom. Keep going. This is for the crew. Another bedroom. What'd you find? My dibs. The bedrooms on this plane are way more extravagant. Gold-plated sinks, multiple showers. Wait, what's in there? That's the toilet. This plane comes with its own theater, a lounge that can seat up to 12 people, and then over here is the living room. This is like a bigger couch than what I have in my house. I just want you to know, you've only seen a third of the plane so far. There's more? What? Oh, we got some good stuff. You can call a flight attendant to your bedroom. If we could do this every time we fly, I'd live in the air. Whoa, whoa, what is that? Sorry, I'm turning the lights on and off. How did I miss this room? Like, we walked around the whole plane. And in case you thought you saw everything, there's also massages on this plane. How is it, Carl? It's amazing. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty cool. And my plane does have two bedrooms in it. I don't know how many that plane has, but my plane does have two bedrooms and it doesn't have a massage, even though I guess I could technically ask one of the pilots to come in and give me a massage. But then I'm sure somebody would interrupt me like this. There's also massages on this plane. How is it, Carl? And that's how rumors start. And then you end up getting a nickname like KY Kelsey and getting a nickname in aviation is the worst. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.